Good morning. Welcome once again to our online church service. I pray your week has been good and that, you know, God has been good to you. Now let's pray and get into today's word. Father, I just want to thank you that we are able to come before you to break your word apart, share your word, get into your word to have a deeper understanding to live by. I pray you bless this teaching Bring clarity and understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. It's good to come to you once again in your home as we get into God's Word, as I said earlier on. Now, today, I've entitled my message, Understanding God's Strategic Instinct. Uh, God's Strategic Instinct. And uh, I want to have a look at God's Word from a different standpoint with what I've called, you know, life application teaching. So I hope it will help us put the scriptures into a more practical and applicable way. So we're going to do something that is more practical, can take up and then, you know, go and live by. So today's message is really, once again, understanding God's strategic instinct. Understanding God's uh, strategic instinct. Now, what is instinct? Now, let's look at, uh, you know, a lion now. I'm going to use a lion. <clears throat> the natural instinct of a lion is to hunt. So if, if you've watched either documentary or uh, TV about lions, or you've had the privilege to go to the wild and, you know, see or observe, you know, a safari, you will see that, you know, the natural instinct of lions is to hunt. So in the wild, when a lion sees an animal, it it, it doesn't think, oh, should I go and say hello or should I go and play? No. It's instinct. The thought process, what goes on in its mind immediately, its instinct is to attack and hunt down the animal for food. Now that action that process, you know, comes naturally to a lion. It's called instinct. You know, it, it doesn't need to think too much. You know, it, it, it doesn't need to do a lot of work. It just comes to it. It sees an animal. It just it straight away gets into action, goes and then, you know, hunt the animal. Down. That is called instinct. And it's natural to, uh, uh, you know, a lion. Now, if you take a tiger, which is similar to a lion, you know, it's, it's got the same kind of instinct. It's more like the DNA in that uh, a tiger is to just go immediately to, you know, go and attack the animal for food. It, it's, it's a natural process. It's, it's called instinct. It comes out naturally. doesn't really need to do a lot of work for it to activate it to work. It is instinct. It's called, it comes into play. It's the same thing if you if you look at you know uh, an eagle, uh, uh, an eagle is a bird that flies flies quite high. Now it, it it does not need to think. Should I fly? Can I fly? You know it can flying comes naturally to an eagle. That is called instinct. It's it's, it's instinct. It's just there. It happens. In the same way, when we uh, look at God Almighty, our Father. You know, by nature, God has a natural, what I call strategic instinct. In other words, you know, his instinct is is to do strategy. You know, God thinks strategically, he he plans strategically, and he acts in a strategic way. That means he implements his action in a strategic way. Now, this is how God is. It's part of his nature. Whatever God does, he always has a long-term strategic reason for doing it. You know, in other words, God does, you know, uh, think long-term, he plans long-term, and he acts long-term. That is his nature. That is his instinct. That is how he is. And, uh, you know, he's got that strategic instinct. 
he does not do things by chance or in a haphazard way. He does not do things for the sake of doing things. Whenever God plans to do something, there is a strategic reason behind what he's doing. And that strategic reason is what I call strategic. It comes out naturally to God. So, for example, if God decides to save a person, he thinks long term. <clears throat> if God decides to bless a person, he thinks long term. If God decides to favor a person, he thinks long term. And, uh, you know, God's plans for our life, his purposes for our life, his, uh, you know, church, is a long term thing. So he's not going to leave us halfway through and then, you know, he checks out. No. Once God decides to move with you, it is for the long term. You see, that is called strategy. Now, strategy really is making a long term decision that affects our future. Making a long term decision that affects the future. Now, uh, uh, another way is, is a plan of action designed to achieve long term goals, objectives, or overall aims. And, uh, you know, it, it can also be defined as being able to perceive the future. In other words, to think into the future, to be able to uh, uh, analyze the future, perceive the future, and plan ahead with a long term view to achieve maximum, uh, you know, result. And that is how God acts. That is in his nature. He thinks that way. You know, God has this strategic instinct. That's he, it means that he thinks, plans, and implements his plans for the long term. So when I talk about strategy, I'm talking about God planning for the long term. God planning for the long term. He plans for the long term. And he plans for the long term. Now let's look at Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1 to, sorry, verse 9, 11 to 12. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 12. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and pray to me and I will listen. So right from here you realize that it's a God has plans for our life. I, I God, know the plans. I have for you. Note, it said plans, not a plan, but plan. So God has many plans in store for us. Not just one, but many plans in store for her. And these plans, he said, to give us a hope and a future, long term. That is strategic. That is his strategic instinct at work. So, so, so God immediately, when he's dealing with us, thinks long term. We are not walking aimlessly on this earth. We are serving a God and our God has a plan. And he has got a strategic long-term plan for our life. And those plans will surely come to pass. Why? Because God has those plans and he's implementing them. God has a strategic instinct. He thinks long-term and his long-term plan will surely come to pass. Now, God told Abraham, I will bless you. I will give you a child. Abraham said, yes, I believe you. I believe you and I believe you will bring it to pass. But it was for the long term. It took 25 years for that plan to come to pass. It took 25 years. For that plan to come from. It is the same with uh, David. God called him, anointed him to be what? A king. But it took 25 years from when he was anointed king to actually be, get onto the throne. Why? Because God thinks long term. He thinks long term. He plans long term. And he implements his uh, you know, plans and actions in our life long term. So you see, you may not be where you are or where you want to be right now, but you are definitely not where you used to be. Why? Because God's plans for your life 
has already been in motion. God, since you started moving, has been moving you on and he has a plan to ensure that you will get to the right place in time. Now, Philippians 1, uh, 6 says this, Be confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, the Amplified <coughs> Version says this, I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect it and complete it until the time or day of Jesus Christ. So be confident of that. Be confident of that. Be confident of that and be convinced of that. Be absolutely certain of this one thing, that he who has begun a good work in you, that is God Almighty, is working something in your life. He is working it, he is perfecting it, and he would definitely bring it to completion. Meaning that God's long-term plan for our life will come to pass. God has a strategic instinct and it will ensure that those strategic plans that he has for our life will come to pass. Now let's dive a, a little bit deeper to understand you know, this uh, God's strategic instinct. Now, God thinks strategically, as I've said before, he plans strategically, he acts and implements his uh, uh, you know, plans strategically. In other words, as I say, he, he, he thinks long-term, plans long-term, and he implements his plans for the long term. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, he says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2 says that the earth was formless or void or waste and emptiness. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the uh, Yes, darkness was upon, uh, upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God uh, 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 hovered or uh, brood over the face of the waters. Now, verse 2 is quite interesting because it says, The earth was what? Formless, void, waste, or which was a waste or, you know, empty. And darkness was upon what? The face of the deep. But God doesn't come and look at the earth in this state and say, Hang on a minute, this place is too dark. I can't do anything about it here. You know, he doesn't come and say, it is formless, it's void, it's empty, it's a waste place. You know, there's nothing really that can happen here. You know, it's going to be a lot of hard work for me to do anything here. No, but rather, God ponders over the situation. He ponders over the situation. He considers the situation in front of him and he takes a strategic view and plan over the earth. You see, God then takes a, a, a view of what he's going to do and then he puts gets into action. Verse 3 uh, tells us here right now, it says that, and God said, let it be light. And there was light. And God saw the light was good and he separated what? The light from the darkness. So what happened here? Now, God pondered over the situation. He considered the situation in front of him and he imagined the end result. He imagined the, the outcome. He imagined what can be in this situation. You know, imagination is a great gift that God has given to us and we can do great things with it. So he imagined it and then he gets into action to act, to create the earth. And he creates the earth. So let it be light. There was light. If you read the whole story, you see how God begins to put things in place. But what God did then was for the long term. You see, God never created the earth for two weeks. He didn't create it for two years. He didn't create it for 20 years. He didn't create it for a hundred years, not even a thousand years. He created it for the long term. He had a long term view and vision of the earth. In mind. Now, I mean, scientists tell us that the earth has been in existence for over three million years. So, in creating the earth, God had a long term view, 
And that is what I say. That is his strategic instinct. That is how God does things. Whatever he touches that he wants to do, he thinks long term. He thinks long term. He plans for the long term. Long term. So it will it, it, you know, exist for the long term and he gets maximum results. You know, church, in our walk with God, we must realize that God is going to be dealing with us in the long term. He's going to be dealing with that on the long term. Even our Lord Jesus on his walk on earth had a strategic view of things on earth. You look, when Jesus was on earth and he was he went about, he spent just three and a half years in ministry. And after that, he was crucified and you know ascended into heaven. But in his three years, he did something that we can learn from. What did he do? He spent time, called 12 disciples. And he, he walked with them, poured his life into them, showed them God's way. Now, that is a strategic reason, uh, view that Jesus was doing there. Because by doing that, when he was away, these guys were able to carry on. They were able to carry on with God's word. They were able to carry on doing God's things and the thing that uh, they had seen Jesus do and they carried on. And church, the church of Jesus Christ has been in existence and carries on for well over 2,000 years. Now that is a way, way, way strategic uh, 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 you know, view and plan that Jesus did. So that it has yielded great results and it's still going strong. It's still going strong. So in our dealing with God, we have to think about that. We have to realize that God always thinks and does things in for the long term. And we must be like God. We must be like God. In his dealing with Abraham, Joseph, uh, David, uh, and the children of Israel, if you study it critically, you realize that it was for the long term. It wasn't for a short-term issue, it's for the long term. Yes, I know we live in an uh, era these days where, you know, there is so much short-term uh, things. You go to McDonald's, you have short, uh, you know, you get fast food, you go here, you get fast food. And these things can creep into our work with God that we want things the next day or we want things even yesterday. But I'm telling you that if you walk with God, you've got to be patient. You've got to realize that God is working in your life and he's got a long-term view and a long-term plan for your life. But his plan for your life would definitely come to pass. It would definitely come to pass. It will surely come to pass for your life. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8 and 9 says, For, I, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my what." My ways, your ways, my ways, declare the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So church, you see, God has ways of doing this. God has thoughts and he's got thought processes of doing things and it's very different for our life. And if we can know how God does things, if we can actually see and perceive and understand God's thoughts, patterns and way of doing things and copy his way of doing things, we will get greater, greater results. We will get greater, greater uh, results. So for us to make great impact in our life and society, church, we must think and act like God did. We must think strategically, plan strategically, and act strategically, and implement our actions and plans strategically. In, the, in, in other words, we must think long term, we must plan for long term, and we must act for long term, because that is how God does things. And we would be, if we are able to do that, we will see greater things happening in our life. You see, the children or the people of this world know this. They've caught on to this thing of planning long term, doing things in a strategic way, and they put these things into actions and they get this result. No wonder Jesus said that at times that the children of this world are wiser than the children of life. Why? Because they take the principles of God and they put it into practice and they get results. They get what results? 
You see, there are countries in this world that have long-term strategic plans, 20 years plan, 30 years plan, 50 years plans. And you see these countries always moving forward, making progress, making progress, moving forward, developing faster. And we have other countries who don't even have 12 months, 12 months in our strategic plans. And time and time again, we see these countries going back to the uh, IMF or Inter uh, International Monetary Fund or World Bank to ask for money. Why? Because they don't have a long-term plan for their countries, long-term issues, a, a vision for their country. But church, we must think and act like God. We must have a long-term strategic view of things in life. We need to think strategic, we need to think long-term, and we must plan long-term. Now, if you've got a long-term view of planning already and you are implementing it, that is a great thing. But for those who don't have, today I want to tell you and challenge you, think long-term, plan long-term, act long-term, and implement these plans, and you will see yourself moving forward. You said, how do I do this? Go to God. Go to God and ask in prayer and ask, Lord, what is your plan for my life? What is your agenda for my life? Help me to identify these things. And I tell you that if you can do that, you can move forward. Remember that in the beginning of creation, God what? Considers what is in front of him. He ponders what is in front of him. And he begins to imagine. He begins to think about the end result. He begins to see the end result. He begins to see the end outcome. Then he comes and begins to implement what he's seeing for the long term. I pray that God will give you ideas, insight, concept for the long term, for the long term, for the long term, so that you know you can see and perceive the future and have 10 years plans. Think about 10 years plans ahead of you, 15 years plans, 20 years plans, and you know you can plan ahead. You can have a strategic plan ahead. You can have a, a, a vision ahead and then you know move ahead. The Bible says, you know, write that vision. Write that vision down so that you will run when you see it. Because while a vision, a long-term strategy plan will cause you to be focused in life. It will cause you to remain alert in life. It will cause you to know what is important in life. And it will cause you to see what you must, you know, put your attention on. And when you do that and you're able to implement, the, uh, implement those plans, you will get greater uh, results. You will get God's kind of result, which is long lasting, which will outlive you and outlive your generation. And your generation and generation after you will be blessed because you have a long-term view in life. Because you have a long-term view in life. If you are in university, if you are doing a, a, a learning a, a new, uh, you know, a, a career, think long term. Think long term. Don't just think about this. I'm doing this, and then after I get a job and do nine to five. No, think outside the box. Think long term. Plan long term. Imagine what you can do with what you, uh, you are learning, and. Do a lot of extra studies on it. That is what God did. He considered what he was doing. He pondered over what he was doing. And he imagined and took a long-term view. And because of that, the earth still remains. It is still doing what it has to do. The sea comes to where it has to come to and moves. Everything is in place. Why? Because God took a long-term view. Take a long-term view about your life. Take a long-term view about your life. Plan long-term. Yes, it will mean spending a little bit of time thinking and planning and, you know, analyzing and praying and seeking God's faith. But if you can do that, you would be able to go and achieve great things. God thinks strategically. He has a strategic instinct. And may that strategic instinct come on you so that you can also plan for a better tomorrow. You can also plan and move forward in a way that you know, will make you able to be great. And the generations after you will call you blessed because you did and took a long-term view that affects their life. May God bless you for the week ahead. 
may he cause his face to shine upon you. And as you implement this thing, may he help you for the long term. You are blessed and have a wonderful week. God bless you.